वेलकम टू अन अकेडमी इंडिया लार्जेस्ट लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म आई एम अभिषेक दत्ता आई डिड माई ग्रेजुएशन फ्रॉम आई टी रोड की एंड माई एम बी ए फ्रॉम आई एम इंदौर सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो यू आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दी आइसोटोप्स एंड दी आइसो बार्स ओके एंड इन दिस वीडियो विल स्टार्ट ऑफ विद सम ड्रॉबैक्स ऑफ द रदरफोर्ड मॉडल एज वेल एज लुक एट दी वेव नेचर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन सो विद दिस लेट्स बिगिन द वीडियो Hello students welcome to an academy once again so this video is about the developments which led to the development of bohr's model niels bohr was the was the scientist which led to the development of niels bohr's models okay i am abhishek datta you already know about me so let's begin this we'll be talking about two topics today firstly we'll discuss the limitations of the rutherford model which are the aspects where the rutherford model does not explain fully right so there were some experiments performed and the rutherford model fails in those situations okay and then finally we'll look at one of the concept which is the wave nature of electromagnetic radiations now from uh, after the first section is complete we'll be talking about few of the developments which led to the development of the niels bohr's model right so this is the first concept among all the concepts which will be used to uh, describe the niels bohr's model okay so with this note let's begin the video so the first one is the drawbacks of the rutherford model now rutherford model as you must have guessed already was not totally sufficient in describing all the different phenomena which were observed by the different scientists okay so as a revision you can read about the rutherford model over here so what is the rutherford model it says the positive charge and most of the mass of the atom is densely concentrated in the nucleus which is at the center and electrons move around the nucleus with very high speeds in circular paths and this is known by the name orbits and these are all together held together by the electrostatic forces between the positive and the negative charges the protons and the electrons okay guys so what are the limitations to the rutherford model according to maxwell theory of electromagnetic radiation so maxwell is another scientist he has worked in the electromagnetic radiation area and he says that charged particles when accelerated should lose energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation so whenever we have charged particles which are accelerating they should lose some sort of energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation guys okay now let us come back to rutherford model so this was the maxwell theory right so in order to maintain the circular motion of an electron in orbit the electron is subject to acceleration why acceleration because the velocity of electron by velocity i mean both the direction as well as the speed so as the direction of the electron is continuously changing electron is in acceleration at all times okay and according to maxwell theory we just said a charge particle an electron for example which has acceleration it should radiate energy it should lose energy in the form of radiation right so according to the maxwell theory the electron should continuously lose energy and finally spiral into the nucleus with the subsequent collapse of the atom but this is not which we observe right the atom doesn't collapse hence there must be something wrong with the rutherford model over here and calculations show that the electron would require only 10 to the power minus 8 seconds it's not that it will take ages to spiral and collapse some calculations have shown that it will take very minute of a second okay to do so hence such an arrangement of the nucleus and the electrons will not yield a stable atom why because this electrons they should have spiraled back and collapsed into the nuclei and hence uh, but this does not happen right and hence the rutherford model is not correct another limitation of the rutherford model is that it says nothing about the electronic structure of the atoms how are the electrons uh, distributed inside the area of the atom over here right so how the electrons are distributed around the nucleus and what are the energies of these electrons the rutherford model doesn't solve this problem right so this led to the development of a different model which is the bohr's model so before we go on to the bohr's model there are a lot of concepts which are being used by niels bohr to develop at his model we'll study two of such concepts over here right 
various developments they led to the development of the bohr's model of an atom these these are the dual character of the electromagnetic radiation by dual character i mean it has two characters both the characters of a wave and a particle right so this video is about the wave character next video we will uh, take this topic of the particle character of the electromagnetic radiation but the next concept which mr bohr's used over here is the experimental results regarding the atomic spectra so there was some sort of experiments going on we'll again do this in the next video okay so let's begin with the first property which is the dual character and in that we said that electromagnetic radiation has dual character that is the characters of both wave and particle and we'll uh, ascertain the character of wave in this video okay so wave nature of the electromagnetic radiation this is the discussion topic now so guys you must know what is electromagnetic radiation before we go on to the wave nature of electromagnetic radiation so maxwell suggested that when electrically charged particle moves under acceleration accelerating electrical and magnetic fields are produced and transmitted so whenever these uh, electrically charged particles move as we said in the previous slide they radiate some energy right this is in the form of electrical and magnetic fields okay and these fields are transmitted in the forms of waves so these fields are nothing but waves and they are known by electromagnetic waves so electro means the electrical field and magnetic means the magnetic fields so it's a combination of two words electric and magnetic because they give rise to both of these fields both the electric field and the magnetic field or the electromagnetic radiation for example light is a good example of electromagnetic waves it consists of both the electrical field as well as the magnetic field light is a very good example so let's move on guys let's look at some properties of such electromagnetic radiations now now what is the first property the oscillating electrical magnetic produced both of these fields are produced by oscillating charged particles are perpendicular to each other and both of them are perpendicular in turn to the direction of the propagation of the wave right guys so there are three things over here the first thing is the electric field the second thing is the magnetic field and the third is the direction of the propagation of the wave all these three are mutually perpendicular to each other you can see this uh, graphic representation of the three perpendicular directions okay so there are three planes over here the x plane y plane and the z plane so this is one of the planes okay so one is the direction of propagation which is the x axis another is the electric field component and the third one is the magnetic field component so all of them are perpendicular to each other one of them is x axis another them of another one of them is y axis and the third one is the z axis so both of them are perpendicular to each other this is the first property what is the second property guys it says that electromagnetic waves do not require any medium and can move in vacuum so they do not require any mu uh, any medium so for example sound waves and water waves they require some kind of media to transfer but electromagnetic waves on the other hand they do not require any medium okay so that is the reason why light from the sun reaches our earth because even if there is vacuum it the electromagnetic waves they reach the surface of the earth just because it can uh, propagate without the presence of any medium okay guys this is how you can remember and the third property is electromagnetic spectrum it constitutes of waves of different wavelength and frequency right guys so there is a electromagnetic spectrum over here you can see this is the spectrum i am talking about and there are different types of waves you can think about like there can have they can have different types of wavelengths and frequencies guys wavelength is denoted by the letter lambda and frequency is denoted by the letter mu okay so uh, we'll study about wavelength and frequency what do we mean by them in the next uh, slide over here so this is the electromagnetic spectrum and on one side you have the gamma rays and on the other side you have the radio waves on this side what is happening which is the gamma side there are shorter wavelength over here you can see this figure it has high frequency and short wavelength while on this side you can see that it has longer wavelength and lower frequency guys okay so these are some examples of the spectrum of the electromagnetic waves okay guys so let's move on so how do we characterize these electromagnetic waves now so as we said there there can be possibility of millions and different types of electromagnetic waves right so how can we mathematically 
characterize one electromagnetic wave so the answer lies in two of the things the wavelength and the frequency so these radiations are characterized by the properties which is the wavelength and the frequency guys wavelength is denoted by lambda frequency is denoted by mu so wavelength what is the wavelength guys if you recall from your physics classes wavelength is nothing but the distance between the successive crests of a wave okay guys and uh, wavelength is a length it's a measure of a distance and hence the si units of wavelength will be meters in small m right and what is frequency guys again if you revise your physics concepts frequency is nothing but the number of complete cycles per second and the si unit of frequency which is denoted by n is hertz right hertz is the way we write frequency it is denoted by the letter h z and what will be hertz the unit of si unit of hertz will be per second so s raised to the power minus 1 it is defined as the number of waves that pass a given point in one second so you need to calculate one second and the number of waves which pass through a point that is the frequency okay guys so as a special note let us see how the wavelength and the frequency which we just described over here is related so what happens is guys in vacuum all types of electromagnetic radiations regardless of the wavelength they travel at the same speed this speed is the speed of light which is this speed which we have already talked 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second or this number to be precise okay guys so what we conclude is that in vacuum irrespective of the type of electromagnetic wave we are talking about irrespective of the wavelength and the frequency we are talking if there is vacuum and if there is an electromagnetic radiation happening it will definitely travel at the speed of light irrespective of the medium irrespective of every other thing this is a constant thing and the speed of light which is the velocity of the electromagnetic wave and the frequency and wavelength they are related by this equation over here so c is the speed of light as i showed over here so c is equals to frequency into wavelength okay guys so what is the si unit of frequency as we saw it is per second and the si unit of wavelength is meter right so meter per second we are getting from this side and hence the dimensions match on both the left hand side and the right hand side right so speed is nothing but velocity which is nothing but frequency into wavelength guys okay so with this we reach at the end of the video let's summarize quickly what all we learned we learned about the limitations of the rutherford model guys we said that electrons should continuously lose energy and it should spiral inward into the nucleus but this does not happen in the real life okay so this is why rutherford model is a or, uh, is not a right representation second we said rutherford model says nothing about the electronic structure of the atoms the electronic structure is not defined in the rutherford model then we looked at a few of the developments which led to the development of the bohr's model and one such development was the wave nature of electromagnetic radiation so how is electromagnetic radiation produced when electrically charged particles they accelerate we get electrical and magnetic fields which are produced in perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave okay guys so there are three things which are perpendicular to each other electric field magnetic field and the direction of propagation we also said electromagnetic waves they do not require any medium for the propagation and there is electromagnetic spectrum which constitutes of waves of different wavelength and frequency right we also talked about wavelength and frequency and how they are related is using this equation here c is the uh, speed of light which remains constant everywhere and the uh, speed with which electromagnetic uh, waves they travel in vacuum is the speed of light irrespective of the type of medium or the type of uh sorry in vacuum only but the type of uh, wave can vary over here okay guys so this is the uh, this is how both of them are related okay guys so with this we reach at the end of the video thank you guys for listening to me in the next session we'll be taking up the topic of the particle nature of electromagnetic radiation so we saw about the wave nature in this video the next video we'll see the particle nature and later we'll conclude why electromagnetic radiation has dual nature both the particle as well as the wave nature as always if you enjoy watching my videos you can follow me over here and ask me any doubts if you have in the comment section thank you guys take care bye bye